Live from Brooklyn, New York, this is Stay Busy with Armand Sadler. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of <laughs> Stay Busy with Armand Sadler, where we have responsible discussions on the music business and the music culture. We smoke responsibly, of course. <laughs> we just have a lot of fun. Uh, I am your host, head honcho, Armand Sadler, vegan chorizo poppy, founder of Ball Nigga Ballers, Sultan of Short King Spring, and aspiring family man. What? Not if I have something to do with it. To my left today, he's usually to my right. To my left is the man who is trying to impede upon my family man aspirations. In, uh, he is uh, he is uh, ensuring that it will be a summer of afuera. For those who don't know, don't know Spanish, that means summer of outsideness. None other than the man. How are you, brother? What's up, y'all? How you doing? Nick Early, executive producing, co-host, and stay busy, man. This has been a a ride but yes we're getting Armand outside this summer um he thought he was gonna be a family man this summer that's what he thought <laughs> but there is much activities to engage mm -hmm. in many brunches to be had many outsides to be, be brunch, seen brunch with my family so <laughs> yes. no absolutely absolutely yes um, your bros huh? the bros, the bros yes. yes of course we got that I want to thank all of you uh, for tuning into our episode last week and giving us such amazing feedback on our episode with DJ Nala Simone. Thank you to her for dropping gems. Really fun episode. She is incredible, incredible person. So make sure that you all tune into that. Tell a friend, tell yeah. a friend. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Boom. Tune into all of our YouTube <laughs> clips and busy sessions. Busy sessions episode seven with Fendi Frank is available. Really, really great interview. I forgot how good that interview was because we did it back in March, but I had a lot of fun talking. I love that. Love that. Yeah, it was really good. Um, also, our bonus episode featuring Rob Shirell is out now, so make sure you tap into that. Um, he just had his first You Had to Be There pop-up party experience in New York City. He'll be having another one next week, uh, May 14th, in L.A., so make sure you uh, check that out. Attend if you would like. He is a um, creative director of Get Busy Streetwear, tour mm -hmm. manager for Van Buren Records, founder of You Had to Be There, and he's a comedian as well. So we had a really great conversation out in Northridge, California. Um, invited me to his home poolside, and we was drinking some uh, tequila on the side. It was cool. Real, That's real right. Good that, that tequila different than the California hey, sun, man. don't it? Oof, man, I was <laughs> sweltering out there, Swelt bro. I, I made the made the mistake. You know me. I'm I'm, I'm kind of a sweaty dude. I he's get in, hot real easily. He's in the valley. Decided too. to wear a long sleeve shirt out there, and I was just in the midst of the baking sun. But yeah. hey, man, we made it happen. It's all good. Look good. You know, the sweat just accentuated the, the haircut that <laughs> the, I just got. The baldy was baldy nice. Was it was shining. You feel me? It was hitting. Feel me? Uh, <laughs> make sure that you follow us on TikTok as well. We got content going up there. Um, this episode is sponsored by my good friend, Daquan Walker, frat brother, founder of Sandir New York as well. He came through, brought us some amazing gifts, showed us off to ya. The bag is nice itself. You see the bag? You see the bag? And then you, you open up the bag, little hoodie in here. Pack. Got a little t-shirt in here pack hit sandir is doing their thing covered in complex and forbes and had pop-ups and all that and to see kwani you know take that from an idea that he was talking about into something that people are recognizing and famous people are wearing and you know acknowledging it's dope it's always dope to see your people doing their thing creatively because we all got that passion within us we all want to see our things go to the next level and so i really identify with that so shout out to our brother for coming through with some gifts um of course, we want to shout out our executive board, our VP of everything, the man you cannot see, but you can feel, Kieran Hurley. Shout out to our VP of engagement, Siobhan DeShields. I was kicking it with her and husband Joe and uh, Miss Two Bees, who was a guest this season. Shout out to them. Had a lot of fun at Honeywell. Drank a few too many sidecars, I think it's called. A sidecar. sidecar. What's, what's in a sidecar? It's like okay. Henny, some like orange liquor or something and like lemon i don't know something i don't think it's typically it was, it henny though. though it's just cognac yeah I don't, okay. whatever it was man, it was good it was good I, I definitely took one to go to go drinks are back cultural reset we back to go <laughs> drinks are here we're a proper country now i love it um 
And of course, we want to shout out our VP of data and analytics, Miss Aaliyah Simone. Shout out to all of you. Thank you for the work that you have done for us this season and will continue to do for us moving forward as Stay Busy grows and gets bigger, bigger than ever, busier than ever. Let's jump into this whether you like, whether you like. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in again, whether you like. Boot up or trip, applying chapstick with your finger or directly on the lip, tricep extensions or dips, and covers or flips. So, Oof. boot up or trip. You know what's funny? Wow. Boot up or trip. Ooh. Put my feelings on safety mm. so I don't go shooting where your heart be. Mm. You, you take a bullet trying to save me. Come on. And I'm in the deal with making you bleed. Mm-hmm. Nah, that's the one. Trip is the one. Trip is the one. <laughs> Boot the Up one. was great. I mean, it was just unavoidable. It's a good song. Like, I remember I heard it recently after not listening to it for years. Like, oh, this was a good song. Like, I understand it stood the hype. Trip was always better to me, though. Like, the second the single. The pen was is like, strong. I was like, okay, Ella. Like, you coming out here, you know, big big first single, big yeah. debut joint. And granted, yeah. she's been putting music out prior to that. Right, but right, right. Boot Up was the one that people right. were introduced to her from. And then Trip, I was like, oh, okay. You know what's funny? Boot Up, I think, was on, like, she did, like, a series, I think, of three EPs. Yeah. And I believe Boot Up was on the last EP. Yes. And it just, it didn't pop until, like, after, where it's, yeah. like, ran. It'd it be like, like that sometimes. Put that on the just debut keep going. <laughs> keep going, y'all. Just keep putting the music out. Keep yeah. putting the music out. Yeah. People are going to go back to that back catalog. So, yeah. Uh, trip for me, for sure. Applying Chapstick, Blistex, Carmex, all that stuff with your finger or directly on the directly, lip? Directly. Directly on the lip. Man, unless you got a sink right by to wash your hands, mm-hmm. people be doing that. I'm like, I mm-hmm. see people on the train doing it. I'm like, y'all nasty. <laughs> That's a different type of dirt. Just <laughs> like, no. <laughs> I've been seeing and, some people take the Blistex, like the one that you're supposed to use your finger, they just be putting it directly on. So you remember the EOS, the little yes, EOS? Yes, bo- yes, So they had, they got it. They had the I vision. feel like they had mm-hmm. the vision, yeah. right? And the branding was solid. Like in high school, I know people who had like collecting, they would just yeah. had like six of them. Joints, yeah, the joints had the EOS. EOS had the vision. <laughs> yeah, the joints had the... <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> They did. Am I, am I making something this up? Is, this is why he's going to be outside. Oh, my God. Anyways, okay. uh, tricep extensions or dips. This is for workouts focused on the tricep I, building. I formally. prefer I prefer the extensions because extensions, you can get jiggy with extensions. Mm-hmm. You can do... Uh, you can do them with the the what's the rope. You mm-hmm. can do the rope and then at the end, flex the wrist yep. at the end. You yep. can just do straight dumbbell. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can do a bunch of things with the extensions. So I'm, I'm going to go with extensions. More yeah. fl- flexible. Tricep extension is one of my favorite like mm-hmm. workouts like of all time. Y'all underworking your triceps. It's two thirds of your arm. Mm-hmm. Do it. More very tricep. Important. They're very important. Lastly, covers or flips. So flips would be taking a sample. You know, and I know you know. But right. No, no, for, for the, the yeah, no, for the listeners. For the yeah, listeners. please. A flip please. is taking a sample and having someone interpolate it. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah, I prefer flips. I think um, we've been getting some. Uh, I feel like people are now. I saw someone on it was someone on Twitter or something like that was talking about samples right now and samples like samples should have a purpose, right? Mm-hmm. Not just sampling it for the fact of the star power of whatever mm-hmm. song that you're sampling, so that's a sure thing. You're trying to maximize your potential of having a sure thing, but like really flipping flipping the sample and making it mean something, right? Um, a flip that I really enjoyed uh, was well, not a full flip, but it's like a you know a sample that I've enjoyed. Um, was guess the, you know Lucky took yeah. the um, mm-hmm. uh, you don't have to call yeah and it, it was so like subtle like it was subtle like he used it and it's like something that you recognize but it's not like that was the thing that overpowered yeah. the song he, mm-hmm. he kind of still was the front man absolutely still, absolutely yeah so I that. agree that's a good one yeah. I would also go flips as well I love a good sample I think one of my favorite ones recently and. I don't know if it's a flip because it's basically like they did the song. They're almost different. It's almost three mm-hmm. categories. It's almost covers, samples, and flips. Yep. I feel like it's almost all three because yeah. I feel like a flip is like almost – it's closer to a cover, but mm-hmm. it's sampling. Yeah, you still you know? make it your own. Yeah. Like, poke it out, J. Cole, Wale. Like, that's very clearly, that's fair. you know, that's vibrant fair. thing. Right, 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 right. But right. they did a whole different chorus. The beat is still similar, but they it's a different song. I feel like that is a flip. Right, 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 right. I agree. Let's jump into this chat. We got a good amount of stuff to get to, so quick response will revisit. Now, I was fighting a one-on-two handicap match last week (laughs) in discussing Wait For You, Future Drake, and Thames, and, you know, uh, my my co-host and my guest, Nyla, they had some complaints about Thames' (laughs) contribution to the song, and, you know, we 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 quickly learned that um, they essentially sampled Higher, which is a Thames song utilize that part i'll wait for you to kind of operate as the chorus yeah. in wait for you um 
And as I think about it more, that conversation, I'm just like, I don't know how y'all could say it was bad when it's like she only really had like one I ran line, it back. I ran lines. it back. Like, and I responsibly revisited yeah, it. Like, you know, especially after people were like in the comments on YouTube and, you and and like going in on me. So I was like, you know what? All right, I'll responsibly revisit and I recant my said statements about mm. Tem's part. Mm. Um, also watch the video. The video is mad entertaining. Great Shout video. out Director X. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Future and Drake, they just I love how they their synergy they is just have uh, fun. They have so much fun, and mm-hmm. I think they just really point at that. It's like the video had a crazy budget, man. Bro. Them credits rolled at the end. I was like a man, movie look, credits. Look. But, but it's all good now. I, I enjoyed it. But mm-hmm. shout out to Thames. Yeah. Yes, we. I know Thames can sing. It was just like, what's going on here? They should have sampled it better. But anyways, yeah. that's a, well. that's not here nor there. <laughs> Take it up with ATL Jacob. My Thank brother. you, Nineteen Crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of Drake, Drake uh, recently inked a new multifaceted deal with Universal Music Group worth $400 million. This deal encompasses recordings, publishing, merchandise, and visual media projects. It goes without saying that Drake's catalog is deep and performs extremely well. He's worked himself into this position. And there's been talks, you know, like after his cash money deal, they were like, yo, if Drake goes independent, the music industry might be screwed. Like, like right. what, what's going to happen? Like, we have so many less uh, event artists now. We have so many less artists who are really like anchoring the ecosystem of music just Absolutely. in terms of the circulation of money and just the the importance of it mm-hmm. so you know universal definitely definitely recognize oh, like we we got to keep this man <laughs> before he goes and starts the the ovo love something and does his own streaming service like Absolutely. <laughs> he drake could do it like if anyone could do that drake could start he would have partnered service. with apple and then it uh-huh. would have been it would have been over yeah but yeah no i think it was from anything, it was like they were gonna like. We have to give him whatever he wants. Like we have to blank give him check. blank. <laughs> what do you want? What do you want this to include? Mm-hmm. We don't. We may not even do some of the things that you want to do, mm-hmm. but we will house it and figure it out because yeah. like Drake leaving, you know, yeah. is like I said the optics. And I think Steve Stout said it back in like 2020 was the one who's like, yo, if if Drake goes independent after this deal, it's over. Over. It's yeah. like labels forget it. Mm-hmm. The biggest artist ever has now said labels are useless because, like, what does that say? What does, you know, say without saying anything, you know? Yeah, yeah. So um, that was smart. People know where the paycheck uh, stub comes from, from Lucian Grange, (laughs) Sir Lucian. (laughs) If you don't know who that is, please Mm -hmm. go back, listen to the music, and Uh then go do a Google search. Quick Google. You'll, You'll find a lot. Uh, the 2022 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductees were announced. The list includes Eminem, Dolly Parton, Duran Duran, Lionel Richie, Pat Benatar, Eurythmics, and Carly Simon. Um, I personally, it's whatever, but like the Eminem induction caused a lot of hatred per usual, which, you know. Lionel Richie too? Yeah. Oh, really? It did? No, no, not, not, it didn't cause no things, but it's not whatever. I, Lionel Richie is oh, one of the greatest Lionel's songwriters great. I, ever. I love Lionel. I love, uh, what's I that love song? Him. Uh, I, I. I call it love. I love that song. There's, Lionel Richie. He's immaculate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Benzino, who's had a long-standing beef with Eminem, if you are, are unfamiliar with Benzino, he's the former uh, co-owner of The Source, and he's worked in music for a long time. They've been beefing since like 2003 when uh, Eminem's album, The Eminem Show, got four mics out of f- uh, instead of five mics on The Source uh, album rankings. And so they've been going back and forth. And Benzino brought up a good point. He was like, yo, there are all these black artists that paved the way in hip-hop and have done this and were rewarding Eminem a guest in the culture and granted he's impacted the culture a lot his sales you can't deny that you know people, a lot of people are big fans of him but you know it's a very good point like at the end of the day he probably wouldn't have been familiar with the genre if not for some of these uh people who paved the way prior to him so uh you know benzino brings up a good point um do i think eminem's deserving yeah probably but you know i think there are some people who probably could have went first so it is what it is uh let's jump into the new music from this week sir is back very exciting. We've been uh, Sir Daryl. We've been chasing him uh, since he released "Chasing Summer" <laughs> since 2019. <laughs> we've been chasing him, and uh, you know, it, not that he's been fully gone. He's dropped some covers, "Footsteps in the Dark." He dropped. He's that been on a couple different projects, but for the most part, he's been relatively AWOL. And it's like you know, TDE is uh, loading up. We know Kendrick is dropping next week. We know SZA says her album is coming this summer. We'll see if it actually comes this summer. I, I think it will. Um, and naturally, sir, is one of the other people. We're like, yo, what's up, bro? Like, it's been almost We're three looking, years since yeah. Chasing Summer. We, we want that album because yeah. you're dope. We want that album. So he dropped Satisfaction. There's an like accompanying video to it. I thought it was a good song. Like, I don't, I don't really have like anything too crazy to say about it. That one line, "I wish the future never happened," I really like. like yeah, he's that- really caught up in this vibe where it's just like, I want to be with this person forever. Be uh, like. 
and I don't want to look towards the future because inevitably whatever we're in is probably going to get ruined. So in the yeah. video, you see him with one chick and they're super in love, taking pics and selfies together. And then throughout the rest of the video, you see him with different women and he just looks so unsatisfied because mm -hmm. he knows who he really wants to be with. That's where you get the satisfaction from. So. That's what I thought it was, that line. Was, yeah. It was about him like... Cause Sir likes a good. He, he kind of messy. He liked the. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he likes the uh, to be in both. Let me let me pull up that that uh, that that lyric right there. Yeah, he says, uh, I, "I wish the future never happened." This isn't simple as satisfaction. I wish the future never happened. I wish I could stay in your arm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, he's. Uh, uh, that's what I said. I said it a few episodes before when I played all, all in my head from his record from 2016. I think it was. Mm -hmm. We are gonna look back and say, "Wow, Sir was really writing." Yes. Like we're gonna look back and be like, "Yo, why didn't we give Sir as much attention for his pen, pen games and Mac while he was doing it?" You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, no, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. I'm just like looped in on the, on the journey now. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, cool. We've broken the ice of like you're back outside putting up music. I want another single next month, and I want a, a single every month until the project rolls out. You know, personally, because you know, I, I felt like it. it you know, it was it was a short song. It was like two yeah. minutes, ten seconds. Yeah, it's just like it's, a hey, I'm back. Yeah, it's a hey, I'm, I'm back. Getting y'all ready for what's coming. Right, right, right. I, I think he'll drop in the summer again. To be honest, I, I, hope I, so. I could see him doing a, a summer. Drop. I like that for him. Yeah, he makes good summer into fall. That's right. that fall tour season Perfect music. Transition music. Like you just listen to fire while you're like the fire, outside. Yeah, 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 maybe like yeah. sixty degrees, like enough to put like a light coat on. Yeah, you're smoking a blunt outside, listening to fire. It's, it's perfect. Sir's <laughs> so, so, so good at what he does. He's so. amazing. Looking Shout out to, to that, him. produced by Steve Octave and Rascal. Yes, 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 absolutely. Uh, let's get into some new albums. Let's start with LMA. LMA okay, yeah. dropped start her there. album, there "Heart on My Sleeve," featuring Roddy Rich, Lotto, and Lucky Day. I believe it's sixteen records. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say that I, I liked it. I got through it maybe one and a half times. It was like three albums that we had to get to this weekend. Mm -hmm. it was a lot um, I liked it. Production was great. I mean, she's got Mustard at the helm, and she's got Connect D. Mile produced on there. So the production is nice. always going to be great. I think the pen elevated from uh, her, her initial project. You know, I, I described uh, her debut album uh, self-titled as like, it was like, it was her introduction to us, and it was a lot of it was like, okay, this girl's cool. She makes, like, cool music. It's, like, kind of cute. And, like, yeah. I feel like she, she's matured now. Yeah. And she's, like, you know, just... She was talking about real experiences on that one, but I feel like she's she's let herself live. Yeah. And she's had different experiences to speak about in this project. It just, it just sounded sounded more grown. It sounded more um, more mature. And I think there's a bit more variation in, in, in the song types here. Like, yes. like, the opening itself, trying is a little more upbeat. Mm -hmm. And you get to Didn't Say with Lotto, which was dope. Um, I really like the Lucky song. Lucky's a feature killer. There's just nothing to say about it. Like, <laughs> Lucky gonna get on a record and kill the feature. The Roddy Rich joint was dope too. Um, and yeah, I mean, for the most part, I I, I liked it. There was a couple couple joints I was like meh on. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I, I thought it was a good project. I definitely have to sit with it more, but it was, I, I enjoyed it more than I disliked it. I would say. I agree. I will give Ella most improved of the girls. Mm. Like In terms from of. I think holistically, mm -hmm. to be honest, I think she sat down and I think they said, "We need to elevate. We need to do something different." I mean, the singles I the singles were solid, but uh, what was it DMFU? No, yeah. DFMU. Yeah, that that Good was long. like the the single. I was like, "No, nah, this one is it." Hard. But I think what they really developed and really spent time on was like, "Let's get some producers on this." Mm -hmm. So the musical quality is just unlike what Ella has before. I mean. Not unlike so far as like there's not a huge gap, mm -hmm. right? But it's leveled up. It's right? elevated. Because elevated. before she had like, you know, 1500. It's and elevated. <laughs> Are you done? <laughs> it's elevated in May. <laughs> Got my thought. <laughs> Anyways, <sighs> so uh, I, I really feel as if, uh, she, yeah, I think I give her most improved. I think from holistically, like yeah. Japan, I felt like she was funny enough trying. Trying is one of the records, like one of the first records, and mm -hmm. I think she got my attention immediately. Yes. Also, too, what I liked about this project is that there's not as many songs, but it felt like a longer listen mm -hmm. um, because the songs are long songs yeah. i mean she has bridges on there she has yeah. breakdowns she has yes. switches that's what i'm saying the production elements like mm -hmm. they didn't really skimp on that at yeah. all and i think that i appreciate that there were moments where i was like 
I can tell that she was pushed to the edge of like her vocal ability, yeah. right? Yeah. Which I think is good. I think every project you should be giving everything that you have, mm-hmm. right? And there were still moments where I'm like, oh, Ella, like I need more, baby. Yeah. Like I need, I need you to do a little bit more, more interesting melodies and things. I would love her. You know how like athletes in the off season go sit with like a, a legend, like mm-hmm. when Kobe went to see Hakeem and his footwork came back crazy. Mm-hmm. I would love for somebody of the like older legends to like take her, like Tony or someone, yeah. right? And just like give her a workshop and just really, really try to push her. Yeah. I don't know what type of work she's been doing with whoever, but I think she really puts a lot of effort in. I think there's yeah. an earnesty about Ella's music before. You know, I'm super hard on Ella, but yeah. but I keep it merit based because I don't yeah. think she's like not trying. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So um I I, I really I think this was a solid project. Um, I think in general, though, like, I'm really, right now, I'm, I mean, we've been talking about it. I'm really yearning for concept album. Like, I really mm-hmm. want a concept album. And I want a concept to ring through really hard. I think her, these songs, I think is like, it feels like a commercial, um, you know, she's in that commercial space. She's one of the yeah. girls. So, like, yeah. the girls are going to give you that stuff. And I think there's a lot here mm-hmm. um, that I'll probably go back to. I need to listen to it again. But it's overall, I think it's a solid project. Yeah. There's not, There's not much that I can really complain about. Um, and I'm not nitpicking to look for complaints, but there's there's things that there are notes for it to be better in the next album. So yeah, she evaded the sophomore slump. She took her time. Like yeah, self title was 2018. You know, a lot of artists do not take that. Much time. Yeah, they feel that pressure to rush. And people have been calling for Ella for years. Like yo, she where's took your time. next project? Like, she took time. Yeah, and naturally, like you say all the time you take time off. People are like oh they fell off or oh they're washed up or it's over for them. No, they just right. And yeah, the efforts there, the effort to improve is. Our, my, my complaint is always going to be my my critique rather is like vocally she could be she could be stronger and then yeah. that's it but she doesn't try to do too much with that but, knowing like she can't hit certain runs and, and after like a certain that. point though I was like okay maybe we can cut the album shorter then mm. because after a certain point I'm like I like I keep hearing you hit the wall mm. like you're hitting the wall not that she sounds like out of breath or anything like that I just I can hear the like there's the limit, and I hear it's not going certain paths, like the way she's articulating certain vowels, yep. certain things. I'm, I'm like, oh, you're sliding, you're sliding by it because that's how you've gotten by before, yeah. right? And so I'm really incur- like excited for her next level yep. up if she can get to that next level. But I think she's definitely on that trajectory of upward trend. So 100%. 100%. Uh, Bad Bunny, the man, him, he's out here. Un Verano Sin Ti released this weekend. 23 songs. I'll tell you, a lot of artists I don't want 20 plus songs from, Bad Bunny. Give me whatever. I'll listen to it all. I don't, I don't know what a lot of these words mean. Granted, I've, I've studied Spanish a lot of my life. I know a lot of Spanish words. <laughs> I can't translate all this just yet. But all I know is I hear it and I feel something. I feel uplifted. I feel like I want to have fun. I want to be outside with my family. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I really <laughs> enjoyed this project. I My favorite songs would be Otro Atardecer. Uh, un, uh, the title track, Un Verano Sin Ti, uh, Ojitos lin- Lindos, uh, Efecto, Neverita, um, Yo No Soy Celoso is fire. I, That's a joint. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good project. He gives you a lot of different vibes, the reggaeton stuff, the pop stuff, the like all of that. Like He really finds a dope way of blending it all, hip-hop feel t- to it as well. That bunny's great, man. He, he don't miss. What I like about him is that he's, you know, he's free. He's yeah. so free. He's so creative. But I think what here, I think a lot of the biggest artists, and you know, I would say he's probably the biggest art in the, artist in the world right now. I think saying that, there's an argument for him being the biggest artist in the world, right? I, I, I don't, the only other person you could bring up is Drake. And right. I mean, Bad Bunny just beat Drake single right. day streaming. Right, right, right. So. No, of course. So, <laughs> I mean, that market, the Latin market is just out of here Insane. so far yeah. as support, so far as just like connectivity. But uh, I, what I liked about this project from a musical standpoint is that, you know, when you're, so, so I ran his other project in, ta- in anticipation for this album, I ran his, some of his other projects and you hear like a consistent theme and sound. But in this one, what I really loved is that you're always looking for the top artists. Like, how are they going to elevate? Like, where can they go from here? Right. When they're these nuclear, just artists, just like, just larger than life. It's like, where can you go from here? <coughs> what I think he did is he kind of stepped back and there's a few records where he took a moment to like. It was very like classic. Imagine you're on the beach in Puerto Rico, like mm-hmm. hearing the sounds, you know. Yeah. And, he, and he's super smart with like the way he shows love to other countries mm-hmm. in in the Latin diaspora. Like Dominicans love him, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. He shows love. He was out in the Bronx mm-hmm. on Cortland uh, shooting. Uh, I think it was Titi Me Pregunto that video, which that song is heat. Yeah, that's a good one. That song is heat. Um, th- I mean, there's just, there's so much here. I think that you can really really get into, and I. 
Listen, I'm going to tell y'all. It's a Ramon and Nick Summer. <laughs> Nico. Ramon and Nico Summer. So, Ramon y Esposa. <laughs> no. No. The Ramon and Nico Summer. I'm so I'm going to be sitting summer, I'm going to be sitting in my in my uh in my crib with the lyrics printed out. <laughs> <laughs> so I can learn these Just lyrics. Texting them the joints. Cuz we are cuz we are uptown with it. We definitely uptown, we uptown with it. We uptown with it this time cuz when this plan I want to be I want to be singing with the joints, you uh-huh. feel me? <laughs> so uh no, shout out to Bad Bunny on this one. Yeah. He's Man. Um, and lastly, I think the album that will get the most discussion from us, Jack Harlow released Come Home, The Kids Aye. Miss You, features from Pharrell, Drake, Lil Wayne, and um, Justin Timberlake. Justin Timberlake is on there as well. Um, I will say, for me personally, I really like this album. I, I, I do. I, I went into it apprehensively. I didn't like the I didn't like nail tech that much. First class is growing on me heavily. I'm not gonna front. Like, and, and you, you, you know what it was about first class? When I was in LA, I was <laughs> I was around some women and I played first class and they went up. I was like, you know what? Jack of just didn't course. make this. He didn't make this song for me. So it's not for us. Looking we at the that. impact of it, it's like he it did what it needs to do. It debuted number one on the on the Billboard charts. Like he's he's out here. Um, so I'll go through my favorites. Young Harleazy is great. That's a good um, one. That's a good one. I like side piece a lot. He samples beautiful Snoop Dogg and Pharrell, but he dedicates it to the side pieces, which is crazy. But hey, man, it works. Um, Little Secret is great. Uh, Churchill Downs with Drake, of course, that leaked a couple weeks ago. Drake went insane on that verse. Like I, I, don't, I don't know who got him mad, man, but he he was he was talking crazy. Like a blade of grass is my absolute favorite song on the project. The production um, was not so on that. Parent Trap was good. Justin, Justin Timberlake did his thing. Pharrell did his thing on the feature. Lil Wayne on Poison. Um, State Fair, great outro. I, overall, I, I really like this album. I'm not going to front. Like the, the only songs I wasn't that high on were, uh, uh, besides the singles, is I Got a Shot and I Do Anything to Make You Smile. Um, but uh, overall, I think it's a really good project. I think, um, I think Jack... And I've, I've complained about, or I've critiqued rather, I keep saying complain, I've critiqued that his rapping could elevate a little bit. His punchlines and bars are a little simple, a little predictable, but I like his flows. He's, he's got a variety of flows. I like his rap voice itself, and he like, like he'll do something where like he'll like say a word a certain way to make it rhyme with the line prior to that. Yeah, that's like, not new. It's not new, but it's just like, I don't know. Like, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rapper device. It is, it into. is, it is, but I don't know. I, I think he, he uses it exceptionally. And also on this project, he's playing around with singing more, playing around with melodies. Like There's like two-part songs on here, like... So yeah, I mean, I I, th- I think he's taking his music to another level. Um, yeah, I don't really have any uh, any complaints personally. So no me. complaints. I'm on. No complaints. I'm on now. I know it ain't that 19 crimes. No complaints. None. Other than his punchlines. Yeah. <sighs> All right, y'all. So I gotta tell it real. I. Am I, am I not telling it real? Is, is that what I, you're? No, no, no. I. I think you're saying I think you're saying real, but I feel like you're being I think you're being lenient. No, I don't think so. Do you think he has? Do you think he's up next for the, to take the keys? No. Okay. No, absolutely not. That's crazy. So, what do you feel about the critiques about this album? Do you think they're misplaced? You seem as if they're misplaced. The biggest critique that I've heard is that he's doing a Drake impersonation, and I think if you're going to limit that to Jack Harlow, when everyone since 2009 has been trying to impersonate Drake in some way. I don't think that's fair to just only put on him. Now, granted, uh, he does idolize Drake. There uh, is a lot of Drake's DNA ex- thank in, in what thank he does. You. It's at a different level. The, 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 like, the like backpack trap mm-hmm. attracts. With the vocal the, the, samples. The, that he'll do. The, yes, the Come vocal on. samples. Yes, the flows. Um, kind of those those lines that are so simple, but it's like they'll, like they'll catch you and they'll end up repeatable. They're... The, the, it'll be that moment at a party, a certain line will come on and everyone is saying it. Like, you know, for, and, but the thing is, what's wrong with trying to emulate and embody and make your own what inspires you? I think every artist has someone that they look up to and they try to kind of take what they're doing, but do it in their own way. Okay. Now explain to me to off that. What's Jack sound? I think Jack makes fun party music. I don't think he takes himself too seriously. I think he he makes stuff. I think he's very serious. I I think that he's serious about his craft. I think he doesn't take himself too seriously in terms of like being an artist. Like he's not out here trying to put out 
messages about consciousness and society and you know no, like different so- spectrum. socioeconomics no, no, no. and all that like and we would <laughs> I, I i honestly think i i and we were talking about this in in the jaw chat uh wango and jordan because jordan was one of the people who felt like drake was uh jack drake, was doing a drake, drake impersonation co- drake cosplay jordan yeah that's, brilliant that's what he said brilliant but way to say that i mean like i i think his sound is just like fun party music at the end of the day he's he's a white guy i'm not looking to relate to him at all do is the production good? Are the bars good? Are the hooks good? Do I feel something when I listen to to his music? I do. So that's that for me is is a W. What do you feel? I, I, th- I think that he's still figuring himself out as well. He's twenty four years old. How do you he feel really something if you don't just, relate? Huh? How do you feel something if you don't relate? That's a, that, that's a different thing. R- r- relating is like let's talk. Let's go to like um, I'm trying to think like uh, Brandy's song uh, by by b- bipolar. Not yes. that I'm not that I'm bipolar, but it's a mental health song. So right. it's something that I can relate to in some way. And did that she's not strike an emotional connection to you? It did, but 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 the di- but feeling something is just like I'm, I'm talking feeling something in terms of do I hear this music? Do I enjoy it? Do I want to dance? Do I want to go out? Something like that. Precisely. That's what I mean by feeling something with okay. regards to Jack's music. Like I not hear, I hear, uh, first class, and I want to be around joints because I want to hear them G L A M. Like I, <laughs> I, 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 I hear Young Harleezy, and I'm like, yeah. He's talking his shit. That's, that's how I'll be feeling too. Like, fuck these haters. You know, I hear Churchill Downs and I'm like, yeah, you you wasn't a fan now, but I remember when you was you was fanned out. I guess when the whole world loves you, ever some they gotta do something to stand out. But hate like shit like that. I, I feel that. I feel that. I guess I relate to it too. And, I and, wonder and why. A little bit. You what, know why? What do you mean? Why? Because it sounds like somebody we know. So what though? What you mean so what? So what? What you mean so what? It's, it's a lot. Bro, it's so many of Future's kids what out you here. Mean, so you, what? It's so many of Young Thug's <laughs> kids out here. It's so many niggas' kids who we don't be like, oh, he's just him. He's cosplaying him. I don't we just he, let it go. I don't think he's like intentionally trying so hard to do that. I think he would I think personally, I think he's still figuring out his sound, which is yes. natural to do. I yes. mean, that takes a long time for a lot of people, right? And I think he hit early. Mm-hmm. So I think he's we're figuring out. He didn't out. hit early though. He's he's had he had a bunch of projects before uh what's popping like early, I think when I say early in so far as like well, he's only 24. That's what 24. I'm saying. It's like, but he's been he making has, music since he was like 16. Yeah, but I'm saying he has so much more to go. We didn't, people didn't, it was, he was a if you know, you know artist mm-hmm. for yeah. a while. Until it was popping. Yeah. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Was it eight years and then been at it 10 years, eating eight or whatever he yeah, said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Great line. So now, we're, <laughs> hey, that's fine. And guess who that's a nod to? Didn't even think about it, did you? Eight out of 10. Come on. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Anyways, um, good point, good, good catch. You, you feel me? Yeah. Come on now, which is fine. Like, show love to your people, and, I'm, and that's dope that he got him on the track. I want to ask you: Do you not like this music? Okay, I'm gonna explain my part. I, I enjoyed this project from a standpoint of what it is for. Right, I get what it what it meant, set out to do, if you will. I'm good. I probably shouldn't say okay. more at, at this moment. <laughs> we'll wait. <laughs> However, yeah, I, I feel as if it left me things to be desired. I think after a while, I caught a lull. Not from the production. Production was solid. I mean, great. Dude, uh, I liked uh, Harleazy. Um, I like Little Secrets. Little Secret to me. I know you took me That production is secret. wow. Out of here. I enjoyed, of course, Churchill Down. Someone said on Twitter was like, Drake's verse is better than the entire project. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, did you can say that about a lot of his verses on a lot of projects. Don't do that. Don't do that. What? what? No, brother. Keep it here, brother. <laughs> brother. I'm, but I, it's not. I don't agree with that statement. But I, get, I get what it's going at. Mm-hmm. Um, like a blade of grass is crazy. Production Fire. is out of here. Like I actually felt him the most on State Fair. Mm-hmm. I think where I'm at now musically, right, is like, I'm not giving people a pass for just putting out something, something to vibe to, something to be cool with. Like people who are trying to do this at the highest level, getting the features that he's got, right? I'm expecting something. I'm expecting him to do something with it, right? And so what I want from him, what I want from all these artists, and this is a me thing, I guess. Maybe I'm asking too much. I probably am. But I want more of that connection stories. Like if, if Drake is your guy, right? I want to hear more about State Fair. Like, tell me how it is coming from Louisville, right? I admit, I don't want to go back to the, all the old music. I want to hear it now with the platform that you got now. Tell me who you are. Tell me the story. What's it like being a white rapper? What's it like, you know, feeling like you just came out of nowhere and people is giving you mad hate? Like, I, I want to, I want to, I want to connect. I do. Mm. Truthfully, I may not relate because he's a, did walks a different life than yeah. me, right? But I want to connect from something like, dang, bro, I felt that. Like, that's real. You know what I'm saying? And that's I fair. think. 
part of it is like he's a very charismatic dude. Extremely. He's he's funny. He's interesting. Like in that p- capacity, right? But black women love him too. They they, they, they love do. them. They do. They do. <laughs> black women be going crazy. For I, Jack. I think at a certain point though, it's kind of like what else though. And I think I'm. Cons- I think we have to wait for that. I, I'm I th- concerned for the longevity of that. I think that's what they all say. His debut album was the storytelling connection project. This one is the oh shit, I'm famous. I can get these producers. I can sample this. I can do this. But I'm also adjusting to fame. It's kind of like Drake's Thank Me Later. Drake's Thank Me Later was yo, I could get a Jay Z feature, Alicia Keys. I could get all these people. I could just show off like who I am. This Jack got Pharrell, Lil Wayne, JT, and Drake all on the same project. Yeah. Compared to his first product, Lil Baby, Big Sean, ESTG, ESTG all, all these other people, it, it was just different. It was just different. But that felt like more the introduction. This is the like, I'm here, I'm famous, but I'm also adjusting to this new life that I have. Like, that's what they all say is less than two two years old. Like, for him to put out another project now, it's like, you know, some rappers take that two year, three year cycle. It's been under two years. He's already back with another project, and the music's elevated. You know, but it's, he's obviously got a bigger budget to play There's around with. Strong. Too. It's the I see the investment in the production. Yeah. I see the investment in the musicality and those elements. Mm-hmm. Right. Jack has been working on that. Yeah. We can see that. That is no um, thing. But I, there's just, there's certain elements for me. I'm left desiring more, truthfully. I think That's he's, fair. I think he can rap. That, let me not, let's not get it twisted. Duke can rap. Uh, I think he puts together good songs. He's, he's, he's charismatic. He's, he's going to sell well. I just, I think there's something there that I want more of the story. I think it's like, because the, the three headed dragon, they still tell their story consistently and sizzly. And it's like, to get to that level, that's what, I'm looking for the next that. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are we talking about? I'm not. Ex- I'm not putting Jack on. The, Absolutely not. On the same I'm talking plane trajectory. I'm not expecting, but it, like, uh, undeniably, in terms of commercial success, he's he's. If if he continues the way he's been continuing, he keeps elevating the production and just all that. Like, he's going to reach that point commercially. He's not going to be culturally. He's never going to be them. But like, he needs a sound. He's kind of und- uh, He's almost undeniable at this point. It's like, bro. Oh, like, no, 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 no. He's not undeniable. Jack Harlow, first class debuted number one on the Billboard he, chart. He's not. He never undeni- had a number one prior to that. Bro, he's not undeniable yet. He's undeniable. Commercially, Ooh. commercially, Ooh, we commercially, tweet this. commercially, he's undeniable. Commercially, he's undeniable. Un- he's okay. undeniable. Culturally, Armand. no. I completely Armand. understand the Armand. cultural. Armand, he co- hasn't done enough to be undeniable. He has not done enough to be undeniable. I mean, undeniable is number one after number one after number one after number one. If you've been following him for as long as you have, and you see. The 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 elevation from the, from the loose days no. to to now, to bro bro no I I didn't expect first class to go to debut number one on, I I didn't expect that at all I I didn't like the song initially, but bro it, it, it happened he himself is not he has not done enough for us to give him that I I mean I I think doesn't also, mean he can't doesn't mean he can't be that it's a, it's it, it, it's it's just a very different game it's a very different game now like like you look at. Summer Walker, for example, look at what Still Over It did numbers wise. That's undeniable, bro. Biggest streaming R and B album ever. Okay, that's that, that's that is that, undeniable. Okay, and that's something that is a metric, a standard that we can't take away because it's yes, that is undeniable. It will her her catalog as an artist, whatever. That's a different story, right? But back to Jack. I'm not talking about his catalog. I'm just talking about him. I'm talking about whenever he is on something from 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 Industry Baby going number one. Moving forward, he's he's like anytime he does something, it's going to be like, all right, Jack drop, Jack will probably go number one. Who could potentially beat him this week? So you're saying Jack is number one? He went number one. That's no, no, what no, I'm not saying. that. Like I'm, meaning, I'm, like I'm, I'm, I'm not saying he's the number one artist out right you, now. I'm saying when you give someone that credence of like, when they drop, it's who's second place. Or, or or who can beat him? I mean, yeah, that's just the reality of it, bro. Like, what's popping? What number two? Beat? Industry baby number. I'm not saying he's the one to beat. I'm that, saying, what you're when, saying I'm I'm saying on a week where he drops, mm-hmm. and it's him, and let's say it's like Lil Baby and it's someone else. Like, it's it's a conversation. Like, yo, who's gonna go number one this week? Right. He's not. He's not no uh, chomp. He's not no person to just ignore. Not yeah. as a sweep on the rug, but. Like the stature you're giving him with the words, I'm not undeniable. even giving him stature. I'm just saying he's undeniable, undeni- <laughs> bro. Because like you can like people are nitpicking Drake cosplay, this, that, and the third, all that. The album is set to um, debut with 110 to 135k first week. It'll probably go number two because Future's probably going to be number one again. Right. But like if Future didn't drop last week, Jack is going number one this week. The album is going number one this week, and with First Class's success and with the video of First Class, and he's probably going to do one with Drake. Mm-hmm. He probably sustain that for a, well, Kendrick's dropping next week, so probably not. But but he's in the conversation. 
He's going to be in the conversation. As he should be, right? He can. He has reached conversation. But it's not level. as he should be because, like, people don't think he's that great. And, like, look at what he's accomplishing. No, no. That, and that's why I think people need to, like, get the hate out their heart is, like, Jack has done enough merit-based, right, to reach and be in the conversation. However, he is not, to me, at that level yet to where we can be giving him certain credence of just, like, oh, automatic Jack, automatic, automatic. Jack going to sell. We know that. Jack going to sell off rip. We know that. You're going to be surprised moving forward, man. I'm telling you. I know he's going to sell well. I'm telling you. We know Jack is going to sell well. We know that. We know he's going to do certain things. We know he's going to bring effort. We know he's going to bring the 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 full package. Which I also don't like the industry plant uh, accusations because it's too. like, bro, just say your marketing is bad. Yeah. Just say your like, marketing is bad and why, his is better. Why, just say that. Why is it a bad thing that a label is investing marketing and time and budget Because he's into marketable. That's, that's not exactly like. That's that's so stupid. Yeah. The industry plants it's the stupidest conversation I've ever heard. Yeah, no, I don't I ever. don't agree with none of that. But all that to say, man, like I, I do I have love for Jack. I, I'm just in a space right now where I'm just like, I'm really holding my those words and that creed and that status to close to the chest. Like you gotta show show me something. That's just me. And I think a lot of people may agree. Um, but I am excited for J- Jack to keep going. I'm excited to see what he can do. I think he has the ability. I think he needs to connect more. And I think we need to get. I think we, we got to give him time for that because uh, Dr- funny Drake said it in the Rap Radar interview. You can hear rappers finding themselves like his early projects. I don't. I don't, I don't know if you've deep dived his, his whole catalog. I, no, I, I, I would I encourage will, you to I deep dive Jack's revisit. Deep dive his whole catalog. See the elevation from the earlier projects to that's what they all say to now. Um, but as he reached that mainstream spotlight with what's popping, and then puts out that's what they all say, and then after that industry baby and all that, like he's he's at a point now where like. The pressure is higher, the expectations are higher, the stakes are higher, and I feel like with all of that considered, he didn't flop. Like I, I, I think that he evaded the sophomore slump. I think LMA did too. I agree. Like, I agree. He's not. In, there's no slump. He's nowhere near a slump right yeah. now. Like it's a good project. All. But I think for him to sustain culturally, because that's good. Put, putting him, cultural listen, expectations listen, on a white rapper. No, though. listen, listen. Eminem is cultural. You don't talk about Eminem. <laughs> Eminem. What do you mean? I don't know, I don't know man. He's like, that's undeniable. That, that's undeniable. That's status. a different era, though. It's a whole different era. I think anyone who knows music, can you talk to right now and say Eminem is undeniable? Yes, no. In any conversation, any stat. I'm not disagreeing, but the time Eminem came up in compared to the time Jack is coming up in. Like, Jack is, it's like we talked about in the old music. I feel music like it was worse new when Eminem was coming in. I don't think People so were way less accepting. I don't think so. You don't think people was less accepting when Eminem I came in? I don't think so at all. I don't think so at all. He, he popped. He popped immediately. People were, he was I, one of the biggest selling rappers for like Eminem was. Well, wasn't he artist of the decade for the two thousands? I think so. He maybe was. I don't know. No, Eminem's numbers is stupid. Oh, if you see uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hello, hello. Girl. Of course, his numbers is out of here. Amen. Undeniable. However, for Jack to get to where we all say Jack can go, he has to resonate culturally because people are saying they didn't feel nothing listening to this. It's great music. I'm not saying I didn't feel nothing. I'm not saying that. I don't feel I'm nothing listening to Eminem. It's like what, 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 what like what. Well, what do y'all mean by feel something? Like, that's that's what I need to hear because it's like, are you looking for the lyrical miracle and it, it like no. just, just putting an encyclopedia that's into a him. blender from Eminem? Exactly. So, like, well, what Jack are you looking cooler. for? Jack is cooler. Jack makes fun music. Jack like, is cooler than Eminem. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I think people are having these blanket expectations when it's like the reality is you have to look at artists different ways. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking at Jack Harlow the same way I'm looking at Joey Badass. Like, just, okay, just no, example, we're we're right. comparing them from us when we were talking about the cultural conversation of being a white rapper. That's why they always gonna get be compared. Every white rapper, you gonna you Eminem's child. From that, like he started it, and you're in the, in the tree of that. We're gonna have the conversation from there. So I, don't, I, I wouldn't put Jack under that family tree. I say he's different. I, I, I'm talking I, about I, from the white I, rapper I, I, angle. I'd put Jack in the in the Mac Miller family tree, not not the Eminem family tree. That's fair, but Mac. If no Eminem, there's no Mac. It's an interesting conversation. We've uh, we have we. They have, may not uh, like that, but I said it. I'm let's, sorry. Let's quickly uh, address a viral tweet from earlier this week from our Kojo is always going viral and getting clicked. <laughs> <laughs> so Kojo tweeted, uh, "Jack Harlow is going to go down as the best white rapper ever. Eminem, you're done." To which I quoted it and said, "My agenda greater than greater than greater than." Because I agree, Eminem is trash. Um, and Kojo, if you read these numbers, 79 retweets, 464 likes, 1,758 quote tweets. People were in his mentions giving him hell, bringing up Babytron, Yeet. 
Mac Miller. Um, and I, I love Mac. Mac's one of my favorite artists ever. Mac so is I, great. I, you know, I, w- I would never disrespect Mac. But, I mean, hey, man, Jack is on that trajectory. He's, he's on that trajectory. Fuck Eminem. <laughs> Fuck Eminem. <laughs> the, the, this is the bias. This oh, is I thought the, Kojo was this trolling. This is the agenda talk. Kojo probably is trolling. I agree you with not. him. You not. I agree with him. <laughs> I my 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 Eminem feelings are on wax on, on Twitter everywhere. It's just like, bro, I'm I'm 26 now. I don't give a fuck about Mom Spaghetti and Lyrical Yo, Miracle. Stop Flip that. Stop it. I don't give a fuck about that. Fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck Eminem. He 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 can't rap better than Gunna. He can't rap better than Nav. He just Jay, he you hear this? <laughs> <sighs> so, um, hmm, oh God. Hmm, hmm, and that's our chat, let's, ladies and gentlemen. Let's, <laughs> let's take it to the slide deck. Are you ready for the final board meeting of season three, my brother? Absolutely. Let's get it. Let's run through the numbers. Uh, 30 episodes. We had 30 episodes this season. Um, our seasons have gotten longer each time, but um, you know, I think for us, we've just recognized that we have things that we want to accomplish. We have people that we want to bring into Absolutely. this space and have people hear from. So I'm going to run through the list. I want to give a big thank you to Kofi Dorma. Uh, Kofi Dorma. Mm-hmm. Hush Forte, Brittany Ortiz, Justin Davis, aka J5, Kojo Dodzi, Nick Watkin, Rose Kranzvik, Talia Litzer of God Mode, Not Nadir Simmons, Savon Alex from Need to Know, Jermaine Weeks of Lips Cafe, Devon Terrell, owner of the HMD Studio, Miss Two Bs, Tamar- Tamara May, DJ Steph Cakes, Brittany Williams, Seun and Kwa from Shown. Active Entertainment Group. Shown, thank you, sorry. Uh, Wango Akan, Jordan Rose, and Nyla Simone. We also had our anniversary episode in December, so I want to thank uh, Alexis Salky and Kevin Joseph for coming through for that. As y'all know, Alexis is the person who helped us direct our promo uh, video for season we one. first started, And man. Kev, yeah, wow. Kev helped us with our logo, our logo that we still have. So we wouldn't be anywhere without them, so it was important to us to bring them in as we celebrated two years. This season, we introduced uh, Busy Sessions, our artist-focused interview and performance series. We've had Reggie Beckton, Eric Penn, Jacques Lane, Rush the Mic, Law, Mia J, and Fendi Frank. Thank y'all for coming through and sharing your stories with us and sharing your talents with us. We were able to take the show on the road when I was out in uh, L.A., shot an interview with Rob Sherell, available now on YouTube. Subscribe. Uh, Rob Sherell of uh, Tour Manager for Van Buren Records, creative director of Get Busy Streetwear, and founder of You Had to Be There. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, I, I remember the conver- the meeting we had at your mm-hmm. apartment with uh, Kieran. We were just talking about, yo, like, you know, taking taking it to the next level this yeah. season. You know, we felt like we um, kind of had this pod thing figured out, and so I was like, all right, how can we elevate it? And a big part of that was um, me having the opportunity to come to this studio when I was a guest on Need to Know and being like, yo, this is dope. Like, we need to we need to come here, and you know, we all got to see it. We mm-hmm. all got to experience it and embrace it and it's yeah. just taking our show to the next level every week we're getting feedback on you know the studio is beautiful the setup is beautiful all this stuff you have is beautiful so i want to thank camden jay drew uh kev and devon of the hmd studio for all of their help with um you know helping the show be what it is and uh, helping to produce the show being there you know switching the cameras all, all that Absolutely. stuff you do it, it means a lot it helps us Absolutely. a lot um but yeah i mean as i sit and you know just reflect on this season you know i feel the elevation and i feel that because i'm exhausted <laughs> we've been we've been working very very hard this season we have you know we've instituted some things internally that have just made made our lives a little easier but it's also like yo what we want to get out of this means we have to put twice as much into mm-hmm. it so we've been we've been putting a lot into it and you know we of course we have our differences creative differences we have our our weekly you know conversation of oh we should do this we should do that but you know <laughs> thankfully like every everything always works out mm-hmm. and you know things that don't work out we just like all right next time we're just gonna do that a little better so i really have no complaints i'm uh you know i'm thankful to all of our listeners returning listeners new listeners you know the the feedback that we get you know um I've n- i'm not a numbers guy i've said that so many times on the podcast but seeing the numbers go up the way they have has been great but more importantly what we've always strived to do in, with this podcast is conversations the cultural impact looking at things from a different perspective nothing is better than getting a text from someone like yo what y'all said made me think about this differently made me go back to this yeah. differently stuff like that like it's really cool to see you know what we strive for encouraging responsible discussions among casual music fans artists themselves people in the music industry the biggest music ex- experts in the world 
all of them seem to get something out of what we do. So we know that our work is not in vain. We're not wasting our time sitting Absolutely. behind these mics and paying what we pay to do so. <laughs> um, so I'm, um, you know, I'm, I'm really grateful for this season. I'm looking forward to a break, but I, I know I'm going to miss it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sad, and yeah. there's, there's another reason I'm really sad. But more so, I'm, uh, I'm excited for the future. Uh, you know, Stay Busy is going to, it's going to look uh, and feel different uh, mm-hmm. moving forward. But you know, you know, like Barney Stinson, How I Met Your Mother, always said, "New is always better," um, yeah. and change is good when mm-hmm. you when it's purposeful. When yeah. It's purposeful change. Um, so I've said my piece. I'm going to pass it off to my co-host as I open this Bel Air. Um, so <laughs> do your thing, man. Yeah, man. No, this is uh, this has been just this is that that feeling of wow, like things are coming together, things are making sense. Mm-hmm. This season, I think has has really shown like keep going, y'all. Like this is this has been that keep going season. Like there's always a new leaf to turn. There's always things you can elevate, things you can grow on. I mean, you know, we go back and laugh about how like season one episodes, you know, one through whatever, we're just like we're two different people, you know, <laughs> individually when it comes to potting. It's like yeah. we come back and it's like, yo, we really thought that that was it. <laughs> like that was not it. Like. It was just not it, and yeah. and I think where we are today, you know, with all of this, the the way we've been able to comprise the show and put it together in such a u- unique and organic fashion, I think that that speaks volumes when when you know when others uh, come on the show and others feel it. And so, like, you know, I, I thank you all for just feeling our effort, really feeling the effort that we put into it because we do we love it, man. We do it because we love it, and we do it because we're trying to say something different, and we want our words to cut through. Um, just because we mean them and we mean it from the heart and we mean it, you know, in the most, like I said, honest, authentic, organic fashion. And so I think, uh, you know, as we move forward, Stay Busy is going to look a little different. Um, and that is, that's because I am officially transitioning over into a full-time executive producer role and I will be more moving back behind the camera, standing next to Jay, hanging out with Karen uh, to continue to orchestrating to drive the creative direction of this podcast and i mean this is people don't know where where this comes from this i mean i'm sure you guys can feel it when we're talking about harlow versus eminem and feeling for all the thousands of topics we talk about but this is really my guy right here man we go really really far back and um nothing is changing from that angle but uh i think first for stay busy to take its next steps and move on to where it's supposed to be we need to uh, rethink the, the ideas of what it looks like on air. And so uh, I'm going to continue to bring the same energy I bring as myself and my my excitement. And it's going to be uh, felt, not seen this time. But um, I, I, I'm excited. I'm excited for what we have moving forward. And Armand is going to carry the vision like like nobody's business, man. We, <laughs> yeah, I really don't know like what we have in store. Um, I think you guys are going to feel it's, it's going to feel different. But it's gonna feel like a, a reiteration, uh, not a reiteration, but a new, a rebirth yeah. in a way, right? And I think a lot of the same things that you've felt and come to love about this show will still be here, and I think that they will be even exemplif- I mean, you know, amplified at the next level. So, I mean, when we have everything running on full burners, we have a full team now. Yeah, yeah we got, I love y'all that. hearing how yeah. it was? Kier, it was us three and Kier, it was us two for a long time. Mm-hmm. It was me hitting the the bump, the the drops, <laughs> messing up. Shout out Yano, yeah. <laughs> that stuff on the drop. <laughs> but um, I, I you know it, it is it is now developed into a full fledged team of people who have responsibilities, job descriptions, and roles, and all this other stuff that we've been able to comprise of. So I mean, this is you know, cheers to building something from an idea, seeing a lack of opportunity, and. Yeah. And saying that, you know, this is where we need to go and this we need to create our own and look what it's become. And I'm so so grateful, honestly. This is a moment of just happiness for me in that sense of, right? You know, it's just like, this is what happens when you put your minds together with with people that you care about, you trust, and know that their work ethic is there to make something happen. I I think a lot of people don't, don't know. That you weren't originally supposed to be the co-host anyway. Yeah, so, okay, like, yeah, he, yeah. Nick, I guess <laughs> give him that. Give him that. Yeah, give him that uh, Nick was, background. Nick, yeah. Nick was really only supposed to be executive producer, but the day we went to record our first episode, and he was just there, and he just like sat down and put a headphone. I was like, like talk, like let's, let's <laughs> like I I can't imagine doing a podcast by myself. And as y'all see, I've had to do it, and I did okay. But it was just like. This whole idea, as we've told you guys, it stemmed from just the conversations we have regularly right. about music. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you pushing me to be like, yo, 
take your talents, take your gifts, and turn it into something that people can see and hear. And I'm so thankful for you, you know, giving me that push, man, because like I don't know if I would have done it myself. Yeah. You know? And you, you need those people in your life who mm-hmm. see for you what you might not see in the moment. Absolutely. And you know, you've been that for me since college, for Absolutely. real. Like I remember those conversations in the library. He was like, bro, what's, what's your GPA? Do, do, do this cover letter, do your resume, all that, get that shit together. It's like, like ha- having someone in your life like Nick who just has that that vision, who can just like see within you and mm-hmm. see like, you know, yeah, you, you might not, be, you might be slacking right now, but you're going to get it. Like you, you're yeah. going to be all right. You just yeah. got to do it. Do what you got to do. You got to put it, put in the pain. Episode title a couple weeks ago, you yeah. got to put in the pain. So yeah, Nick was not originally intended to be what his role has been these last mm-hmm. three seasons but man it's been it's been amazing um you know it's mm-hmm. like we'll, we'll be texting about certain albums and like i, I won't even want to give my full perspective right like, no no, no let's, say, let's bring it to the pod bring it to the pod bring it to the pod um and um yeah you know it's like a lot of people are wary of going into business with your friend mm-hmm. and we would be lying if we said we didn't have our difficulties right. but you know you are the one friend in my life I've got a lot of friends like this, but you stand out among others in that I've never really had to worry about like you in terms of doing me wrong, right, finessing right. me, shit right. like no. that. You know what I'm saying? Like situations <laughs> like that. It's always like, bro, yeah. like, no, I'm I'm trying to help you get to where you are. You gotta put the work in too, yeah. but I, I wanna help you get there. And I'm so, raw too, y'all. I keep it I keep it too much. Sometimes too too raw. Too <laughs> yeah, raw. but hey man, yeah. you need that. You need that. You need that. Um and so, you know, it Truthfully, mm-hmm. as as I reflect on this journey we've been on, there's no one else that I could see myself, you know, yeah. doing this with. Um, and you know, as as much as we are being sentimental and all that, Nick, <laughs> Nick is not leaving. He'll pr- probably <laughs> pop up on the mic here and there, right? But um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's it's a uh, it's a new step. It's a new, it's a new season, as as you told Literally. me. You know, like it's it's a, it's a new season in my life in general. New job. Diff- just different things happening and I've, I've been a little overwhelmed over the last month mm-hmm. and so you know this is obviously a slightly scary step it's something that we've talked about for a while i've, I've, I've accepted yeah, yeah, it yeah. but now putting it out here for people to hear it's like damn like this is real like mm-hmm. come season four episode one there will be someone else sitting on that couch mm-hmm. um but it's okay because you have to recognize your gifts your purpose Absolutely. and where they can be best applied and so I, you know, I, the moment we had the first conversation months ago, I completely respected it. I was like, yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. If that's what you feel, I, I, I don't want you playing point guard when you know you could be better at small forward. Man, come on like, now. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, that's really what it is. So yeah. I'm, you know, as, as much as, uh, as, as interesting as, as it will be, um, navigating this new era of stay busy uh i'm excited for it. and at the end of the the, the work the work not gonna stop it's gonna be great the work not gonna yeah. stop the group chat not gonna change we, we still gonna be in there clowning with kieran we still gonna be all right yo like what, what are we doing this week this uh like it's nothing changes it's just it's just a new face you know new, sitting new next levels, to me a new, new voice but um to be great you know um i'm i'm excited for that i'm excited for some time off for sure <laughs> for sure i'm going yeah. to reiterate that because i'm definitely excited for that but yeah, I just know, like, um, stay busy going to the moon. To the moon. Literally. We are, we are Literally. we've, these last couple seasons just have just been us putting gas in, in the rocket ship, you know, screwing in a couple things. Mm-hmm. And now it's like season four is when we take off we take to the off, moon. Man. So, um, yeah, I want to, want to put the, the bell easy up. I want to give a toast to kind of similar to my anniversary one, to being creative, to Absolutely. being resilient, to being relentless, to being purposeful to being God fearing, mm-hmm. to being respectful, to being responsible, mm-hmm. to being innovative, and to completing three seasons of a podcast when some people stop after episode. One. Come on now. And quitting was never an option for me, man. But you know, the, the, those moments sometimes it's like we ask ourselves, is what we're doing reaching the people? Is it Come making on. the impact? And this season has shown more than anything. We we sell ourselves short sometimes. I think we so, really yeah. do sell ourselves yeah. short sometimes. So no, now it's just about focusing in and doing better moving forward. So I want to ask you a really quick interview. Since <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is your this is your this is your your exit interview. What's your favorite stay busy memory? <sighs> my favorite stay busy memory. My goodness, I don't think I have an exact one, man. But I think honestly, I really do relish those moments from when we was back in in, in elizabeth mm. really like we was in 
Yeah, I don't know. We would we used to go. Um, our first few episodes, we used to go to uh, Elizabeth, New Jersey, at the Cerebral studio. Sound Studio. Yeah, Shout Sound out to King Studios. Solomon. Shout out to them. And you know, um, for us, we would get down there. It was just like a whole process to mm-hmm. get there, and like driving there from Harlem, and then uh, you know whatever we would do just to get there. And just I remember just being so prepared, excited. That feeling, you know, that feeling of like here we are. We're just trying something new. We're yeah. really like figuring out as we go. There's no blueprint to podcasting. Nope. There's none. I had my little bit of experience with TV and production, and I was like, I got to lean into that, and that's where we're going to go. But it was really like how it figured itself out, and I think over time, early getting that look, that that Joe Budden look, right, yeah. if you will, the yeah, look. Yeah. <laughs> Socials went crazy for right, that. Right, right, right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I guess I said it. I shouldn't say it, but shout out 19 Crimes. But <laughs> I think that was a moment when I think that was like a, wait, hold on. Yeah. Wait, hold on. And that was early, right? And I think like episode seven, episode eight. It was yeah. early on, right? Yeah. Before, you know, most people even know what the what the title is gonna be. Like and so I think that those little moments, I think it was just those early days at Cerebral yeah. Sounds, I think were my favorite times of just like, man, because we was really just off the true passion, just like here's the heart and we just gonna give it and yeah, just gonna y'all just it. gonna take it and y'all gonna see. And I mean, I you know, it was we was really just head down. I remember, man, we just it was just a great time, man. Mm-hmm. I think um, those days remind me of the the simple things, right, man. It reminds you of why you're doing it. It reminds you of the friendship, the love, the the uh, desire to to make something of yourself. It's those those things you can't. And when you look back and it's all said and done after the success, everything is like you're gonna look back, man. Like the humble beginnings. So I think it was the humble beginnings yeah. that I really really appreciate the most, and like I think will be some of my most fond memories of being you know hosting a part of it but memories more to come but uh, i think those are some of my favorite favorite times man and i mean the people we've met through this is just also a huge highlight i'd be remiss if i didn't say that yeah, man. you know from just the, the relationships i built with so many people you know who you are for folks that i've been able to just talk to you know recently and just it's also just made me more confident in being able to be a more better communicator and uh effectively com- communicate my ideas about the things that i think about you know and so i i've I've loved being able to have this, if you will, platform to to do that too, because it's. If I've had fun, a lot of fun. Simply put, it's fun just doing that and trying to be deliberate as well as an intentional about having something out there in the media that is responsible and, and yeah. something that you know we put thought behind and can articulate our feelings, and it's not just pure conjecture. We have ideas, stats, and and just to see where it's taking us today. So I mean, we're we're saying the th- same things, but y'all, I, y'all who have been here. <laughs> You know. You understand it. And those who are just seeing this today, go back. Go back and listen. And you will hear the progression. (laughs) Laugh. Laugh. Please do. Because you're like, wow, they've really come a long way in such a short time, in two years, three seasons. So, man, this fourth season, we're about to go out of here. I'm going to put you on the spot here. I don't want to offend any uh, past guests, but give me your top three episodes all time. Stay busy with Armand Sabin. I knew he was gonna say this, and I was like, "Man, I, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta be very careful about this." Because when I say something, I don't want to leave people out. But hey, y'all, I'm gonna speak real. Hey, man, I gotta shout out my good brother Yano. You know what it is, episode brother. four. Tom episode Mattel. four, our first guest. First right? guest. So, I mean, he was first, our first employee of the week. First, first guest. employee of the week. I mean, brother has all the first. Yeah. First employee <laughs> of the week. First guest. Yeah. I mean, and it, that was our first video episode as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We you were, know what I forget the name of the studio. Yeah, out there in, Brooklyn, in, yeah. in Ridgewood or Ridgewood, somewhere. Yes. Um, but I mean, yeah, me and that brother, we've really connected. We've, we've had an opportunity. He's given me just, I think, just gems on gems on gems, and I really, really, truthfully appreciate him a lot. So I mean, that has been a great episode. G was there too. Yeah, G was there. G was our <laughs> photographer. <laughs> G did take the some iPhone photos. camera. <laughs> oh, G did take some photos, man. Um, <laughs> And I, uh, I'll say this year's uh, when we the anniversary episode was really special. I think it was another moment of just saying like, wow, like, you know, for them because they hadn't been back since for a while. You know, like mm-hmm. Kevin was a guest, yeah, but we they hadn't been back all together for a while, and like, for they were there from day zero. Literally. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so then them coming to the studio with the lights and mm-hmm. the engineer Jay and everybody and yeah. just like. That was our first time meeting Jay, too. That was our first? <laughs> yeah, Yo. Jay brought the energy. <laughs> that was, Jay got the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was, yo, yo, I promise you, we yo, was like, 
Jay. Uh, we need Jay. I'm crying. Jay called the audible, y'all. Yeah, she and did. But it was Jay, lit. Jay called the audible, Celebrate and I'm like, it worked times, because on. we are. It, it was the perfect vibe. Uh, and th- shout out Jay for reading the room and she, really understanding. Mm-hmm. The vibe at that time, so that was a special moment. Very I remember literary. being leaving on fire, like yeah, now nah, we like, lit. Her, that was, we need her. <laughs> that was that was great, and I mean, yeah. I think those two have really set up uh, in my mind. And then you know, and then I'll say our first one too. Our very first episode. Our very first episode, just from like talking about Nipsey, just wide eyed, bushy tail. Let's get it done. Let's have a good time. Shit, yeah. Let's get it. And I think uh, those three, I think, have really have really stood out in my mind. Uh, recently but you know everyone everyone has has brought a lot to the show and i'm really thankful for everyone who's who's coming i want a special shout out and thank you to to jf prime ruby stats for the uh the music on the show that you know this is all original music produced by us um for helping us out with that and i mean we've been playing that music for since the start of the show with the theme song and then you know stats doing the outro for us um, just really want to shout out everybody and thank you, Grizzy Row. Shout yeah. out to Grizzy Row for season one. Yeah, outro, yeah. Season one, uh, season one outro. So man, it's a, uh, it's been, it's been great, man. I'm really, yeah. really thankful that we've just been able to start something, and I, I can. This is the beginning of a stage, so. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot more things to give. There's um, our photographers from season one, Shaka, Miz, I see. Aaron Antonio. Um, am I forgetting some? This is when you start naming names, you start. Yeah, you fuck up. You fuck up. Malik. Malik was our videographer. Yeah, season shout out Malik. One. Great dude. The people who've been on our team. Malik, another Malik. Uh, Jenny. Uh, I'm trying to think who else was on our team at certain points. Uh, we've got a couple people coming. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, we're solid now. We're solid now. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, um, it's, it's, it's an interesting it's an interesting moment. Um, it is. It's definitely a very interesting it, moment. But I feel it. It's 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 exciting. You know, it's mm-hmm. exciting for a lot of different reasons because you know, at the end of the day, this wouldn't have been started without you. Mm-hmm. So now it's kind of like, <laughs> I'm 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 older than you, but I feel like you're like the <laughs> you're the you're, you're the dad who like had me on the bike with training re- training wheels. That's like, you take the training wheels off. You're like go go, go forth, my son. <laughs> you're like 85 percent there. You feel like, hey, I'm not ready, but you actually yeah. the last 15 is just mental. Yeah. Just take it. Just take it go and go. Go forth, my yeah. son. So. so, yeah. Um, so, yeah, with that, you know, this is our season finale, ladies and gentlemen. Let's uh, hit this bell- Belize one more time. Yes. I want to thank you all for tuning in 30 episodes this season, 30, 30 for season three. Thank you all for loving the busy sessions. Thank you for enjoying the bonus content. Thank you for tapping in on social media, our reels, our TikToks, everything. Thank you for the feedback. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the encouragement in the moments where I've needed it the most. This is, this is hard work. Again, we say this is not just sitting here, turning on mics and recording. It is a daily, <laughs> da- it's it's a job. It's a college course Actually. with a lab, Actually. with a recitation. Six credits. With multiple prelims and exams, final exams. Like It's it, it's a lot. It's a lot. But, you know, we're, we're, we're built for it. We've done it, and we're going to keep doing it. So, um, you know, very thankful to you again, Absolutely. my brother. Um, wishing you wishing you well in your transition. Mm-hmm. Um And um, with that, of course, we want to thank you all once again. So make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on TikTok. Check out all of our content. Engage. Tell a friend to tell a friend about the busy boys, the busy family. If they've never listened to us, they have 30 plus like 28 plus 25 episodes to binge. So that's about Mm -hmm. 83 just regular episodes. Then we got two anniversary episodes. We got the busy set. We got a lot for you. We have content. Episode 100, season four, we, it's, it's going to be a big thing. It's going to be a big thing, and that's coming. And that's an exciting milestone to approach, too. But for now, I'm going to let my brother do the sign-off. Y'all know what it is. We want y'all to stay safe, stay humble, and always stay busy. Baby girl, baby girl, how you feeling? I've been out in the world, staying busy. Taking time, getting right if you miss me. Yeah, yeah. I'm the size, 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 I'm the
baby girl, how you feeling? I've been out in the world, staying busy Taking time, getting right if you miss me I've been out in the world, staying busy